Well, another really good night for Aaron Judge, who remains red hot. He was four for four. He had a home run. He had three doubles and a walk. Let's check in and see how he's responding to critics. Next time you see my face, show some respect. Just been thinking a lot lately about this 2024 team and success and then thinking about the 2022 team and how they were rolling strong. And then I feel like that Mike King injury was like just a turning point. And I don't know, just want your thoughts on this team versus that 2022 team because kind of felt like that team was a little bit of fool's gold. Great call because I've been thinking about this a lot myself. That 2022 team was not much different than the 2021 team. They didn't add a lot of significant quality pieces. They definitely didn't have enough left-handed bats. This year, I think the makeup of the roster makes it more conducive to long-term success over the course of a full season, not just a couple of hot months. Having lefties, especially somebody like Juan Soto, who you know is going to be in there all season, barring some kind of unforeseen injury, and you got Verdugo, who's playing for a contract in his prime. You've got um, Austin Wells now as one of your catchers who's a dangerous left-handed bat. Even though he hasn't done much yet, he's dangerous. I just think that the makeup of the lineup on any given day is much better. And, you know, we're doing this without Garrett Cole, without Tommy Canely, without Scott Efros, without DJ LeMayhew, without Jason Dominguez. So I think this team might actually get better, whereas I felt like in 2022, and a lot of people felt this way, they were kind of playing a little bit over their heads. They were playing with a little bit of attitude after the tough 2021 season. But this year, it really just feels like they're a really good baseball team. Why don't they ever give Rizzo a breather at first base now that we have Birdie and Cabrera? I know they're not necessarily technically uh you know first basemen that's not what they came up into the league as but they can both play pretty much anywhere on the field appreciate the call first base is not a super demanding position and so i think running a guy out there for a couple of months straight is not a big deal when you're 34 years old you don't have to run very much at first base sure you got to make some picks sure you have the occasional collision but I think that the Yankees are just going to keep running Rizzo out there at least until DJ LeMahieu comes back, and then you might see him get some days off. They're going to want to get DJ's bat in the lineup occasionally, at least. I don't know how good he can hit anymore. He's had a lot of problems over the last few years. He did look better in the second half. But they're going to want to give him the opportunity to get hot because when he's hot, he adds a valuable contact piece to this lineup. But Rizzo's been playing really well over there, both offensively and defensively, so... If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Yeah, hey, Derek. This is Doc from El Paso. First off, let me tell you, I think you have a great show, and I watch you after every Yankee game. And the only thing I have to say about tonight's game is it almost makes you feel bad for Minnesota. I don't feel bad for Minnesota one bit. They're a professional baseball team. They've got every right to make trades and drafts and sign free agents. They've got every opportunity that the Yankees have. Sure, they don't have the payroll, but they get better draft choices, and they've got an easier division. I don't feel bad for Minnesota at all, and I hope the Yankees continue to kick their brains in today. Hi, Derek. This is Matt from Morristown, New Jersey, home of Anthony Volpe. Um, I wanted to say I've been a big fan of your channel since 2021, and you are by... by far have the best post-game um, show um, out of all Yankee channels. Uh, that being said, uh, great uh, dub against the Twins uh, for nothing today. Um, and I know they uh, brought in Caleb Ferguson because uh, he, uh, you know, he hasn't pitched in a minute. Um, but my God, why did they pick this guy up from the Dodgers? I think they should release him and bring back up from AAA, Ron Marinaccio, um, who I think can actually pitch in high leverage situations. Um, Yeah. All right. Keep up the great work. Uh, Thank you, Derek. Bye. Yeah. Thanks for the kind words. I think the only thing that they saw in Caleb Ferguson is that he throws with his left arm. Uh, Now, Ron Marinaccio getting sent down last week was mysterious because he's been pitching very, very well. I thought for sure they would just DFA Tonkin, 
But, uh, yeah, Marinachos look good this year. we got a few more voicemails in the inbox, but first, a quick word from our sponsor, Odds Jam. Looking to boost your sports betting game? Meet Odds Jam, the ultimate ally for data-driven wagering. With 260-plus sports books, it's your go-to platform. Here's how it works. Odds Jam's arbitrage tool spots differences in betting lines, letting you lock in risk-free profits. Plus, optimize bets with a positive EV calculator and track profits with a convenient bet tracker. Try it risk-free with a seven-day trial. Use code RECAPS for 35% off your first month. Link is in the description. Bet smart. Bet responsibly with Odds Jam. Good morning, Derek. Uh, Jersey Joe here. I uh, love your show. Quick question, just hear me out. What if they were to move Jason Dominguez to the minor leagues and teach him how to play second base? He's already gone through all of the development to become an outfielder. He's been an outfielder his whole life, and he's a good outfielder. And he's got a crazy good arm despite the Tommy John surgery. Now, it you know is not unheard of for outfielders to move to the infield, Mookie Betts is one of those guys, but Mookie Betts is a different type of body. Jason Dominguez, his body type really profiles more as a corner outfielder, even more so than a center fielder. I think eventually he's going to be a uh, left fielder for the Yankees, but I don't see any chance that they move him to second base, not with the other infielders that they have coming up through the system like Roderick Arias, George Lombard, Yorbit Vivas, and so forth. But I appreciate the creativity, just not going to happen. Hey, Derek, I was thinking Jose Trevino might might be our biggest trade bait. Going to go ahead and disagree with you there. Not only is he very cheap and very good defensively, but he's a clubhouse guy. He's a leader. He's trying to train Austin Wells in the same way that Joe Girardi helped train Jorge Posada as he was coming up. Everything that you hear about him is that the pitchers love throwing to him, and he can steal you a game with his framing ability. We saw it the other day against Tampa. Imagine if you have a moment like that in the playoffs. Until you have an automated ball strike system, there's a lot of value to a catcher who can steal you a few strikes per game, and that's what Jose Trevino does. Now, does that make him valuable to other teams as a trade piece? Sure, but the Yankees are trying to win. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I will be back after the game this afternoon. The Yankees play at 1 o'clock. They finish off the series against the Twins, and then they head home. They got the White Sox. White Sox have been trashed this year, so the Yankees should be able to beat up on them. But we might get a look at some of the pitchers that could be trade targets, guys like Garrett Crochet, who we talked about last night, or Michael Kopech. So tune in. I'll see you next time.